Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about solid friction or regular friction. Uh, we're going to go over the types of friction, how to use the equations. Uh, so here we go. The picture here gives a pretty good uh, mental picture of what is going on when we're dealing with friction, why friction is a thing. Uh, the idea is basically that nothing is perfectly smooth when you really get down to it. So we're looking at the classic crate on a floor, pushing a box along the floor, exciting stuff. But if we imagine what's happening between the crate and the surface of the floor, um, at the very, very, very small, like microscopic scale, there's like these tiny imperfections in the surface of the crate and in the surface of the floor. And those imperfections rub against each other. And this is what really creates friction. If you like, what happens is as they kind of, the bumps move past each other, they end up jiggling back and forth and kind of vibrating. And that vibration creates heat, and heat is energy, and so I'm losing uh, energy, which is another way of thinking of resistive force. So these imperfections in the surfaces is what causes friction, so that's why the different surfaces that are in contact impact how much friction there is. All right, so to define it, solid friction is a resistive force between surfaces of two solid objects that are in contact. Uh, it is an empirical thing The everything we know about friction comes from experiment and study uh, rather than more intuitive or, or deep laws of physics. Um, this is something that we really just kind of figure out experimentally. And what we find is friction, the force, is proportional to the normal force. This might make a little sense if you think about what's going on with friction. The fact that it's these two surfaces interacting with each other, the normal force is the force between those two surfaces is a force from a surface pushing on the other. So if they're pushing on each other more in the perpendicular way, when I try to move them like parallel to each other, there's going to be more interaction of those bumps. Uh, so that's a way you can maybe think of it. But the force of friction is proportional to the normal force. Uh, that's exciting because the force of friction is a horizontal force. The normal force is a vertical force. Usually uh, the two are always kind of perpendicular to each other. And so that means I usually need to use both parts of my net force analysis. I've got to deal with the x dimension and the y dimension. You're usually dealing with, at least in a basic way, a system of equations. Okay, there's two types of solid friction. The first is called static friction, and static means not moving. So this is the force between two surfaces that are at rest. So this is if you push on the desk in front of you just a little tiny bit, you're pushing on it, but it doesn't move. That's because there's a force of static friction opposing you. And if you push forward with one pound of force, the desk will push back with one pound of force to oppose that motion. But it is a reactive thing. If you push with five pounds of force, the desk will push back with five pounds of force on you. So it can take any value up to a maximum. This graph really summarizes pretty much everything we need to know about friction. So here's the static region here. Uh, so on the x-axis here, we have an applied force. So this would be we are applying a greater and greater and greater force and seeing what happens to my force of friction. That's what this uh, F is. Uh, so at first, I, if I'm not applying any force, there's no, nothing needs to oppose me, so I apply no force, there's no force of friction. Uh, I apply two newtons of force, two newtons of static friction opposes me to keep the table at rest. I apply 10 newtons of force. The table pushes back with 10 newtons, keeps it at rest. I apply 19.9 newtons of force. The table pushes back with 19 newtons of force. At some point, though, let's call it 20, uh, you know, whatever. But at some point, I push with enough force to get that thing moving. At that point, I'm overcoming the maximum force of static friction that can oppose it and keep it at rest. There's some number, right? So if I push with 20 newtons or more, I'll get this table moving. We call that the maximum force of static friction, or FF smax. Uh, it turns out, uh, once you overcome that, the force of friction actually decreases to what we're going to call a kinetic force of friction or a dynamic force of friction. You have probably noticed this in your everyday life. If you ever try and push something really heavy, it's harder to get it moving than it is to keep it moving. Like once you get the couch moving, it's much easier to keep it moving with the push. That's because the force of friction opposing you literally becomes less once it's sliding. 
Uh, this is why the equation in your data booklet is written like this. The force of friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. In other words, this is the maximum force of static friction. The normal force times the coefficient of static friction. That would give me FF's max. Okay. Uh, the force of friction, the actual static force of friction can be anywhere between zero and that value. So what you need to do is draw an FBD and figure out what's going on with all the other forces and, and kind of do a comparison. Because all we can find mathematically is the maximum. You gotta you need to analyze the situation to kind of see what it actually is. Okay, and dynamic friction is the other type. Uh, a lot of times you'll see this as kinetic friction as well. They mean the same thing. They both mean moving. And it acts between two surfaces that are in motion. So it slows you down when you're moving and sliding. And for this equation, it's very similar. Notice it's equal to because for kinetic friction, there is no change. Where static friction can be kind of anything up to a maximum. Once you're moving, the kinetic friction is what it is. It just has a value. It only depends on the normal force in this coefficient. So these mu values are called coefficients. There's a coefficient of dynamic friction and a coefficient of static friction for any set of surfaces. They'll be provided or you'll have to look them up um, or you might have to solve for it but they're just decimals between zero and one to represent how much friction force there is given those two surfaces. So this force of friction you just calculate straight up. So sometimes you'll need to decide whether or not something is moving based on the forces that are going on. It's not always gonna be completely clear. So, you always want to, you need to do some kind of comparisons when you deal with for, with friction forces. The first thing you probably want to do is figure out the maximum force of static friction. So say, like in the example we were talking about, you find, you multiply the coefficient of static friction by the normal force. You've already gone through a mean FPD and found the normal force. So you multiply those two things together, you find that the maximum force of static friction is 20 newtons. Well, then you can do a comparison. If I'm applying a friction force greater than that, if I'm pushing with, uh, if I'm only pushing with 15 newtons and the friction force is, the maximum friction force is 20 newtons, then there's no motion. So net force equals zero, and I can apply net force equals zero to my free body diagram and solve for the force of friction or whatever I need to solve for. If my applied force is greater though, it will be moving the friction then is dynamic friction, and I set up my free body diagram and net force analysis with kinetic friction or dynamic friction. Uh, so that's really the process. You gotta figure out which one of the friction forces are you dealing with, is this thing moving or not, and go from there. Obviously some problems will just tell you this thing is at rest or this thing is moving, and then you know which one to apply. Just keep in mind it's only ever one. It's either static friction because there's no motion, or it's kinetic friction because there's motion. It, they'll never act together because one acts when it's moving, one acts when it's not. And that's it. Those are your two types of friction. Uh, another tool for your toolbox of solving uh, FBDs and dealing with force stuff. So uh, have fun.